Very happy to have Dana White back in the studio. Maybe not. We uh, we just caught up with Dana, and he just gave us amazing shit. That's so true. I guess we don't have to do the interview. <laughs> oh, it was a read? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> we're back okay. anyway. Was that a read? Yeah. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> Who was it for? Uh, it was for the fine folks of Dish. Network. Ah, yeah. People and know about hopper. Dish. Good enough. Good enough uh, to hop or go get don't it. Worry blah, blah, blah. So much. We'll, we'll, make, we'll make good on that one. <laughs> uh, we haven't, Dana hasn't been in the studio in a while. You've been on the phone yep. a bunch of times. And uh, I, I was telling Dana off air, and I want to say it on air, that every fighter that has come through here, has they've all been great for us. Thank Just you. great. So I you're doing something it. right. Because... You know, I'll say it. Baseball players in general, they're, they're assholes. We've we've never had a good time with uh, baseball players. But every single UFC guy comes in here, gives it, his, his, you know, they're all, gives us great radio every single we, time. Well, you know what? It's funny because when we got into this into this sport, you know, we fell in love with the sport. And then as we started to meet the athletes, I mean, that was really what sealed the deal for us. They really are good people. Um, they're all gentlemen. You know, they are. And they're, they're great. They're great people to be around. They're just... They really are. Right. They're so. The funny thing is, is there's so many misconceptions about the guys, you know, in the old days. But when you meet them, you, you would never expect these guys. Not at be, all. Uh, they're yeah. great. I, I mean, we're aware that they could rip our heads off. But <laughs> right. But besides that, they're unbelievable. The last time I saw you was I went to the, the Silva fight, and, and, I, and I saw you there. And uh, what a fucking – I've never been so shocked in my life at what it happened. Crazy, it, it, it was crazy, wasn't it? It was – like, you think you can't be surprised by anything? And I yeah. literally stood there with my fucking mouth open. But we were talking about that before the show, too, because uh, someone was in here and said a lot of the fighters said that he had a shot against Silva. Well, Chael had said that to me. Right. He, oh, you were the one who said yeah. Okay, right. But you said that Chael said a bunch of the other fighters were also saying, don't don't assume that Silva's got this. Chael said that to me. At, we saw each other in the restroom. Mm. And, um, you know, after complimenting each other, oh. like men will do. <laughs> I was like, what do you think? And he goes, he goes, I'm picking Weidman. And he goes, and a lot of the fighters are picking Weidman. Right. And I, I had asked Dana about that. Uh, I kind of, I, I said like, "Hey, Chael," I, I said that a lot of the fighters are picking Weidman. Now, do you think they're picking him, or is that like? And what I was saying was, do you think that these are guys who like guys who have lost to him or don't like him, just kind of want to see? I was wondering if it was more wishful mm. thinking mm -hmm. than anything. Right. Uh, you thought I, I had heard about some internet conspiracy thing, which I had not heard. But oh, uh, right, right. I was surprised that all these fighters were picking him. And I'm like, do they just hate Silva and want to see him lose? Or they really believed it? Yeah, no, people were saying, because as, as the lead-up for that fight and all these fighters were picking him, you know, he came back into my locker room that night, and uh, and he's like, come on. He's like, I mean, all these guys are saying that he thought, you know, I thought you were saying that, like, we were telling fighters to say, you know, oh, Anderson no, no, Silva no. would win the yeah. fight. Right. But, no, I mean, we don't tell anybody to say that. They pick what they pick, and, and a lot of, I told, I was saying, you know, when he and I were talking off air, that a lot of the, uh, like George St. Pierre, George St. Pierre absolutely knew that Weidman's going to win the fight. He wouldn't even schedule the fight. Like, no, I'm not going to do a super fight with Anderson because he's not going to win. Wow. Yeah, literally what he said. So he wow. wouldn't even talk wow. about booking a fight. That's how much he believed in Weidman. Wow. Yeah. See, I thought I was like because I heard it from Chael, who I, uh, I like, but I'm like Chael has a thing for Silva. I'm like, I wonder if that's just guys True. wanting yeah. to see him mm -hmm. fall because they're sick and tired. Like, you know what I mean? If mm -hmm. I see a comic who's I know is good about to, I'm like, uh, if he bombs, I'm so fucking happy. Like, I wonder <laughs> if that's the same. But man, they knew something because uh, Faber had picked. I think Weidman, a lot of guys picked. And you don't think Silva's done, right? No. Yeah, he's got. That, a few, he's got a few more. Yeah, that that uh, the rematch is going to be interesting. Yes. You know, obviously, I think if Weidman wins the rematch, you know, maybe Anderson would retire, but. Who knows? You got to do a Don King and make sure Weidman loses the second fight, so you get the third fight. Yeah. <laughs> oh God! Don't even start that. That's what everybody. That'll be the next thing. Yeah. It's a no lose for the UFC in the weird way that, like, if Weidman wins, everyone's he, gonna be he's watching. Legendary, it. and if, right. if Anderson wins, then it's like, okay, a, you got a third fight, and b, it's like, oh, okay, he was. You truly around don't need and... the third fight. It would be, you know, if it happens, it happens. But everyone's gonna be watching the rematch. It's um, it's it's already set up all nice. Yeah, and you talk about a third fight depending on how fight goes you know what i mean it's like everybody anderson silva is 38 years old a lot of mm -hmm. people don't realize that but if he went out there and looked like you know he just showed up and was old all of a sudden it'd be one thing but he didn't look old it's the way that he lost yeah. he was out there goofing around like oh, wasn't that crazy God. in the arena that night like at first when, when he got knocked out the whole place was in shock like yeah. you said everybody was sitting there with and then the place just went crazy well yeah. i started you know i love anderson silva and i start as i'm watching it and he's doing that. It looked like fucking when Weidman had him on the ground in the beginning. It looked like he was, I guess I'm going to guess a heel hook or whatever he was going yeah. for. And I'm like, Silva might be in trouble early. 
And I'm like, what? I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, don't listen to him. I was yelling to Weidman, don't listen. He's in your fucking head. I was getting annoyed at Silva for, for taunting him. I'm like, man, you better take but this Silva's guy always been great at that. I so, love that. Yeah, about Roy him. Jones Jr. jumped up after the first round, started screaming at me. This fight's over. He's in his head. It's over. Right. Oh man. Yeah, and then that second round came out. People were going <laughs> crazy during that fight. Like all the people that that were. Uh, on the side of the cage, they were going nuts. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe, I, and I, I rooted for Weidman in that moment because I got so annoyed at Silva for, for doing that. I'm like, what are you doing, man? This guy's a real fucking problem. Yeah, I think everybody did. I mean, even Brazilians that were booing him on the way in were cheering him on the way out. Wow, you know? no kidding. Do you think that's humiliating for Silva to lose that way? Like, yeah. Not just to get to beaten by a guy, but to be clowning around like that? Of course it is, yeah. right? That's humiliating to lose, period, that way. I mean, when, you, when, you, when you've when you never lost and you're the best in the world and you get knocked out, yeah, it's always, mm -hmm. that always sucks. It's never no fun. No shit. That's a tough sleep. So yeah. why did he say no rematch at first and then like a week later or whatever he signs on? You know, it, I, I've dealt with this a lot with guys, especially, you know, Anderson Silva forgot what it's like to lose. So right when it's over, you're like, yeah, whatever. And then, you know, it sinks in and reality sets in over the next few days. And uh, I met with him. He fought Saturday. I met with him again on Thursday, and he was very ready to fight again. Oh, course. really? Oh, yeah. You don't want to go out that way. No way. No way. You got to go. And give you another shot. Uh, I was asking Dana off air about A Rod. He was, t and he started telling me a, a pretty, pretty great story. And I said, "Stop! I want to hear the rest <laughs> of it on air." I just asked you about A Rod and you know what's going on with him, and then you said that you, he's like, "What? what? I, I didn't want to put words in your mouth." I said, "A Rod's my man. He okay, always will be, man." Yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm a Red Sox fan. That's, right, it's not yeah. a Yankees thing, but uh, you know, I, I was diagnosed with Meniere's disease, which is basically nerve damage to your inner ear. How and what, you get that? Did you just uh, born with it? No, or? from being you get it from being punched. Uh, you get it from being punched. You get it from um, a lot of cops and, and military guys get it from the shooting and the loud noise mm. from shooting. A lot of rock stars get it, and guys that are in bands get it. You know, it's basically you, you, you do damage to that nerve. And what it does is the nerve starts telling the brain that you're moving when you're not. And when uh. you get these attacks, you literally, I'm telling you, you go down like, you got shot by a fucking sniper, man. It's it's crazy. You, you go feel down. Nauseous or how oh, you, you puke. You puke. If you don't close your eyes and get in a dark room, you will puke your brains out. Oh, is it like being a, like a dizzy feeling? Yeah, no, it's it's vert you start spinning. The room starts spinning. Oh my god, radio guys, like your this. worst. I you. I'm turning down my headphones. Uh, <laughs> the worst. It's the the worst thing you could ever imagine. A lot of people man. commit suicide to get it. Wow. Jesus. Yeah, it's 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 real bad. So there's no cure for it. There's no cure. They have they they try to do things. Uh, you know, there's a surgery where they can put a stint in there, and I, I did that surgery. We saw the video. video. Yeah, yeah. Was, that video was horrific. <laughs> there's a surgery where they <laughs> go. Though? It's basically brain surgery is what it yeah, is. They geez. drill through your skull, get inside there, and, and, and they uh, insert this tube. And there's another one where they go even deeper, and they cut the nerve itself. <sighs> and you have to learn how to walk again Jeez. after they cut that oh nerve. Oh, my God. Now, they didn't cut the nerve for you. No, I, I didn't cut the nerve. I went for the stint. And uh, it actually it actually made me worse. I, was, I, I went from having attacks uh, every once in a while to having attacks every day. Um, and then it also gave me tinnitus. And tinnitus is the constant loud oh. ringing of the ear. Your ear just rings really loud all the time. I had that. that. Oh, that's terrible. It's, it I've, gotten that, I've gotten the, the woozy thing, too. Really? I've definitely gotten that. Where um, I'm sober? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Oh, was, oh no! See, no, it was, it was from constantly drinking. Wait a minute. Sorry. No, I've gotten that before. So where uh, I'll, like, I'll be I'll be working on something, working on some equipment in the, uh, downstairs, and I'll have to like go like this, maybe turn sideways, and whoop, like totally disoriented, where you're you're completely like spun around. You got to yeah, shut your eyes, go look up. Straighten your head out, and then it's like gone, but uh, yeah, not, that, and not totally gone, just a little, still a little woozy. That could be, you know, symptoms nah, of, of, of it coming out. How long ago? When's the last time you had? Just me talking to him like I'm a doctor. This, so when was the last yeah. time you had these things? Uh, this, <laughs> this happened fucking for for years and years and years on and off. Oh really? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's it, terrible. It could be, but when you get this, you're down for hours. Some people oh, are down man. for days sometimes. Whoa, whoa okay, yeah. When I, when I would get an attack, I'd be down for nine, ten hours. Oh, wow. Yeah. At what point after surgery did you realize, oh, my God, it didn't work? Like, how long did it take you to realize, like, fuck it, made it worse? A couple worse. months. Oh, a while later. Okay. Yeah, well, no, I knew I was, because after that surgery, you're, you're, you know, you, 
recovering from that is, is, to do. is brutal. I was still, I, I literally did that surgery, flew home uh, the uh, the next morning, and then flew to Chicago for the oh. UFC on Fox Chicago fight. So I, I kept right on going. Well, you hit it. You hit it pretty well because your work ethic, everyone knows about. Uh-huh. So I can't imagine you being, you know, Jeez. down and out for nine yeah, hours. Yeah, I was, I was, I was, uh, I was toughing through it. You know, I, I, but my life, my life, the year after that uh, happened to me, my life was so different. I literally couldn't do anything, man. I was, I was just down and out. I didn't work out for over a year. Damn. Um, wow. Yeah, I was. It was driving me crazy. So I, I was literally at the point where I'd just given up, and I said, "This is." This is going to be the rest of my life. This uh, is this is my life now. Brutal. You know, my quality of life is is over. It's it's just not ever going to be what it was before. So I get a call from A Rod, and Kobe Bryant had sent him out to Dusseldorf, Germany, um, his knee and back. They do this stuff out there where they they take your blood, and they 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 do what's called spinning. And and I'm I'm no doctor, so I can't really explain exactly what they do. But they take your blood, they incubate it, they spin it. And then they, they they give you they inject it back into you ten hours later, and I, I got the injection on Sunday. I flew back to Vegas from Germany, and uh, that was that, that was Sunday. I landed. I went to bed. Got up. I had to fly to Stanford. I spoke at their business school on Monday, you know, and and I didn't really feel any different. Mm-hmm. Flew back home, worked a little, went to bed, woke up Tuesday morning, and felt like fucking Superman. Jesus. I'm not kidding you, man. I, I felt like I felt like I could fly to work. I could have f- flew to work that Tuesday, and from that day on to right now, my life has been exactly the same as it was before I had the surgery. How long wow. ago is this that you got it? The final? I, I've had. Uh, so what happens is when you fly out there, wow. you, they they take so much blood. For, it's funny because they're sitting there and they're like, uh, "Do you have a problem?" you know, giving blood or whatever. I said, no, it doesn't bother me at all. So I'm sitting there. The girl sticks the needle in me. I'm like, God God damn, that hurt. This chick doesn't know what she's Uh, doing. I look down. They got a Slurpee straw uh, in my friggin' arm. The needle is so big, and the blood just flies out of your arm. (laughs) And they literally fill up three Fiji bottles, you know, that size. Right, right. Full of blood. And, And it literally takes, you know, 30 seconds to, to fill this whole thing up. They bandage your arm up. I had a huge bruise. This whole inside of my arm became, you know, yellow, black, and blue, and purple, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and you, you, you know, then you go hang out in your hotel, kick around Dusseldorf, Germany for, for 10 hours, and, and you go back, and, and they give you the shot. And Wait, now, they incubate some of your blood, obviously, not all of it, but they just take a, th- that much of your blood, and they incubate it, and they do something to it. All of it, because they, they end up making, with the blood they take, they end up making two shots. It concentrates down to a certain yeah, to amount. Yeah, two little shots. Yeah, the two shots. Oh, Super oh, shots. Man. Yeah. And what's in those shots? Just your blood? Yeah, and- your blood and... I, I can't remember what it's called. I'll get you the book. Yeah, I'll get you the book so you can check it out. Because now Jimmy wants is, is done. <laughs> well, here's the thing. The thing is, the, here's their philosophy <laughs> out there, is that as we get older, everything that we have, including some of these diseases that are out there, um, like Parkinson's and, and other things, are due to inflammation. Inflammation is what starts to break us down, from arthritis to joint pain to even, they said, what was giving me the attacks with the nerve was inflammation. Inflammation starts to get the nerve irritated, Jeez. and it, it's just, I'm telling you guys, it's amazing. So so the crazy part about this is you have to be referred to these guys. You can't just go out there. You have to be referred. So A-Rod refers me. I fly out there, and my life's been different ever since. It's, it's unbelievable, right? So you didn't have to go back, right? It was that one trip? I flew back. Oh. I went back twice. I, I flew back three months later and got the second shot. So I did two shots. I did the first one, flew back three months later, and got the second one. Oh, when they incubate it down, they incubate it down to two shots, and they right. hold one for three exactly. months? Exactly. Oh, they don't give you both. Yeah. Okay. And the blood that they do is good for six months. Mm-hmm. So you got six months to get back there to get the second shot. Once I get... felt so good. I said, fuck it. I'm going out there. I was going <laughs> right? to fly back the, the next week and do it. So I, uh, I went out there <laughs> and, and, and got it done. And the funny part of the story is, you know, when you look at who they've helped, they, you know, George Clooney apparently couldn't lift his shoulders up over his head. Clooney's been out there. Pope John Paul uh, couldn't kneel anymore, so Pope John Paul did it, and it started. It started. Uh, you know, he had Parkinson's disease, and I guess they get tremors or whatever their attacks are. Mm. He was having no attacks before he passed away uh, right. eventually, uh, and then uh, you know, golfers. 
uh, Kevin Durant from OKC, every soccer player out in Europe, and the list goes on of all these people that that, that they, they all do. Believe. Wow. So you think about health care here in the United States, right? And and you know, all, all they want to do here is cut you and put you on pills. They they don't really fix anything. Uh-huh. They just sort of mask all the problems. And these guys are out there actually curing people in, in, in Germany. It's it, the level of. Uh, of of uh, medicine there and the level of medicine here is night and day. Why don't, why don't they bring it to the, yeah. the states? It's illegal here. I have no yeah, idea. I know. Why? Why? Yeah, if it's, it's working for people. Here's the craziest part. Let, let me get to this part, right? So Clooney, all these actors and actresses and, and, and uh, athletes and all these people, the one thing I never asked is, how much does this cost? <laughs> right? Sure. I didn't give a shit. I just wanted to get out there, and if this thing was going to work for right. me, I, I, I'm, I'm in, right? So I get out there, and, and the other thing, the attention, you get there, the first day you get there, they do this full MRI of your, your body, your brain, your spine, everything, and the doctor literally sits with you and goes organ by organ and tells you, you know, what's going on with you and looks at all your stuff. And then, then I went in and saw an ear, nose, and throat specialist. Then I saw the doctor who does the, the actual blood work, and I mean, I, saw, I must have saw four doctors, and they spent hours with me over a two-day period. Oh, man. Right? Yeah, so you're thinking, you know, holy shit. So, so he go, finally he goes through the whole last thing, and they're about to take my blood, and he says, any other questions? And I'm like, yeah, yeah How much what's, does this cost? Cost? what's this going to cost? And he goes, eh, we'll take care of that at the end. I go, eh, I'm kind of curious and would like to know right now. Uh, so uh, we, 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 he says, hold on. He goes in the other room, comes back, 7,500 euros. That's it? That's 10 grand. Yeah. 7,500 euros. Wow. That's not so. This isn't something that, that right. right that that it's only for the super wealthy can go right. there and, and get them. Anybody could do it if you have, if especially anybody who has Meniere's disease. Only people who have Meniere's disease know what it's like to go through it, and and, and anybody would come up with ten grand if you had to take a loan out to go get your life back. You would do uh-huh. it, and then you know it's, they're, they're helping people with Parkinson. The first guy I called when I landed in the states was Freddie Roach. I told Freddie Roach, Freddie, I'm telling you. Huh. Go go try this thing, man. I don't know if he's done it, but I set him up to do it. I don't know if he has. So have you had an attack since? No, I'm nothing. No, I'm, wow, that's, that's I am a healed, man. I'm I'm like a hundred percent. My life and, and that whole time that I was going through it, you can't eat salt. You're not allowed to drink alcohol. You can't, there's a lot of things that that will aggravate it. I've been eating salt and drinking plenty of alcohol, and I'm I'm uh, I'm good. One last question: Do you have to go back to keep it up, or you're good, good? Yeah. Well, th- what they said is, you know, obviously, ride this thing. They, first of all, when I went there, th- they didn't know if it would help me or not. Hmm. Th- there wasn't like, oh yeah, this is definitely no going to help you. Right. Right. Yeah, they didn't know if it would or not, and they said, but I'll tell you what, we'll give this thing a shot. We'll see how it goes. And um, they they said people that had that they had, um, uh, you know. Done. Who had Meniere's disease had less than one ta- had less than one attack a month after mm, wow. you know doing this thing. So they they don't give you any guarantees. They don't say, "Oh, this right, is the magic right. pill. Yeah, yeah. Spend your seventy five hundred right. euros, and this is going to work." Good They're for like, you, We man. have no idea. We'll Good see. For you. But after your second treatment, do they say like you said the first one? They say, "Okay, you got to come back in three months." But after that right. second one, is there a time frame where they say, "Now we see how it?" Yeah. Goes. Now we play it by ear. Just okay. ride it out. If anything starts to happen to you again, call us. We'll get you back in, and we'll. We'll do it again. And how much time since your second one? It's been a while now. A I don't know months. how long. Oh, no, no. It's been it's well, been seven or eight months. So if worst case scenario, if you got to go once or twice a year, you, you've right? gotten your life for once or twice a year. Mm-hmm. No doubt about it. Pretty fucking amazing. It's amazing. And it's annoying that they won't do it here. There's probably some garbage FDA excuse FDA because, like you said, fucking, they want to keep, yeah, keep yeah. you on pills. And if this is wiping stuff out. Not only that, uh, and, and you can blame the FDA, but you also got to blame all the fucking litigious United States that we have. So the FDA passes this through. It goes through. Somebody sues. And now, you know, yeah. it's all about that. So they need... They need every little stamp of approval from the FDA so, so they don't... So go to Germany. Enjoy yourself. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's true. Yeah. Cool. It's true, man. It's like a little trip. You know, this place is open seven days a week. They said weekends. It's just packed with Americans. Really? Well, everyone yeah. is calling. They're like, give us the website, the place. That's amazing. So everyone wants to book yeah. a trip. I do. Well, you got to be referred for this one. Yeah, you have to be referred to them. Yeah. And that's the only place in the world they do it? That's the only place I know of, and that's where everybody's going. You know, and there's places here in the United States because people have said, oh, they do the same thing in the United uh, States. No. no, they don't. Trust <laughs> me. It's not the same. You think 
you know, all these actors and and athletes are flying to Dusseldorf, yeah, Germany, because they're doing the same thing here in the United States. Beverly Hills somewhere. Yeah, and yeah, not even close. Happening. But that's what they're doing. So what's happening now is this place in Germany is opening all these uh, places. They have a place in Beverly Hills. So you go to the place in Beverly Hills. They do all the testing there. They test you. Okay. They do all the MRIs. All the and then they fly work. you to Dusseldorf to, to do the shot. So you don't have to do all that. Yeah, all that all uh-huh. that stuff there. Did Kobe and A Rod get this done? For, yeah, for their yeah. injuries. Yeah, tons of tons of guys have. And did it make A Rod hit the ball better? Well, no, it's not about hitting the ball better. It's about he, he, his, his knee and his back were messed up. Right. Yeah, and and th- that's what these guys specialize in. That's what they really do. They they they're uh, joint and you know bones and things mm-hmm. like that is what they do. In general. Yeah. But right. as they do continue to do more studies, they're finding out that inflammation is the cause to a lot of our problems as we get older. So how do we get, uh, knock down our inflammation? You fly to Dusseldorf. <laughs> <laughs> but there's nothing yeah. else we could do with supplements or anything else we could do now? I don't think so. It's, 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 it's part of, uh, you know, the human structure as we start to get older. Yeah, right. That's what happens to us. We start to. Wow. My I'm nose... emotionally inflamed. Yeah. Rogan's going. <laughs> Rogan's got back problems and Rogan's going out there. I really? got him set up. It works there. on oh, apes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to have the fucking the hair on. He wants to have his arms raised. <laughs> human like a fucking savage. I watch him walk around with his chain wallet and I'm like, That's, I'm, I, am I competing genetically with him? Uh, this guy, yeah, I know. <laughs> Horrifying. Fucking Joe is the best, man. Yeah. I, uh, we love Joe, man. Totally. Oh, he's, he's a fucking, fucking great. I'm seeing him doing his podcast. Stuff. You see his show fun. now? His show, yes. his show just aired with the big foot. last Wednesday yeah. uh, on, uh, or no, Thursday, right? Is it on Thursday night? I want to, on I sci-fi. sci-fi. 1.3 million viewers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. His first, oh, wow. his first episode. Yeah. A lot of him, UFC man. people. So his second episode airs this week. Yeah, he's a blast. And and uh, he raises really, and he's a really good talker. Like, I listen to his podcast or when he calls it. And phoners are hard to do. And Joe is just a good talker about whatever you want to discuss. He's really yep. great on the phone. And uh, Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When I say good talker, I don't mean good bullshit. I mean, he's just a great conversationalist. Yeah. Right? As opposed to me, who just stopped the show by making really an unimportant <laughs> observation. <laughs> You'll have fun with his podcast. I love his podcast. He's going to try to get you high, though. Nah, he knows I don't. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? He's going to try, though. He did it to me. He did, did it to me, too. Yeah, for, really. First time in, I couldn't I couldn't even tell you, 15 years, I think. Yeah. And he's blowing yeah. smoke in my face, and I finally took a baby hit. <laughs> I'm not going to, like, overplay this. I took a baby hit. How but we, it, it set me off. I was like, wow, this isn't bad. <laughs> I don't mind this. <laughs> what do you like high? I can't huh? picture Dana White high. I'm, I, I don't know. I'm never high. He, he was trying, he, you know, he says, I have the cure for your Meniere's disease right here. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah I'm sure that's going to make me feel wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So you got the big press conference at 1 o'clock today, man. Yeah. Is all those guys going to be there? Yeah, yeah. We, we, you know, yesterday, we were in L.A. yesterday afternoon, um, and basically we're doing this world tour because never – in the history since we've owned the UFC has the end of the year been so badass. This Saturday night on pay-per-view is uh, the Korean Zombie versus Jose Aldo. That fight. That's going to be a great fight. Where's that taking place? Down in Brazil. Oh, okay. Then we got Ben Henderson um, you know, yeah. coming up after that is, at the end of August is Ben Henderson versus Anthony Pettis. Then we have Jones versus Gustafsson. And the big beef with Jones is that he's too big for the 205-pound division. You know, oh, it's unfair. He's too big. He's this. He's that. Gustafsson's an inch bigger than he is. Wow. So there you go. Jeez. Then in, uh, then in October, we have uh, the best trilogy we've ever had in, in UFC history with Cain Velasquez versus Junior Dos Santos. And when I say that, Cain Velasquez got knocked out in the first round by Junior Dos Santos in the first fight. Kane annihilated Junior Dos Santos in that second fight, mm-hmm. and now here comes the third fight. Although I'll say for that second fight, I was amazed because I think Kane won five rounds to none. I really was amazed that Junior did not get knocked out. Like, took he's that a punishment, tough dude, man. He looked like an rounds. alien after that fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he looked like I would have looked after yeah. Kane beat him up, <laughs> but he did up. not get knocked out, and and it went the distance, which I was amazed at. Yeah. Wow, then then November we have uh, Johnny Hendricks. Versus George St. Pierre, which many people believe is like the Anderson Silva fight that Johnny Hendricks is the guy who could actually end the reign of George St. Pierre. Mm. And then to end the year in December, we have uh, the rematch with Weidman and Anderson Silva. And the co-main event of that is Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate. Mm, So we literally took all these guys on the road and we're doing this world tour with them. And, And basically, because my philosophy has always been... 
Everybody wants to watch a great fight, but you got to know the great fight's on. So mm-hmm. normally we just go from fight to fight to fight. So we're doing this world tour with all these uh, all these champions and all these big fights to end the year, and uh, then we'll start promoting them one by one as they right. start to come. Wow. You had a good night on Fox, I thought too, with uh, 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 fucking uh, Demetrius. Uh, Demetrius, how uh, awesome Johnson. was that fight? Fucking, uh, those fucking flyweights are just yeah, so unbelievably awesome entertaining. Yeah, and how about there's, it, uh, you know, that was the, he broke the record. That was the latest finish ever in a title fight in UFC history. So how much time was, was in the fifth round? There was a minute that? something left, and he had just got his nose blasted Dude. in the fourth round. You see that his nose was just smashed, oh, and uh, he, he could have just rode out. That fifth round, he goes for an arm bar with a guy who's super dangerous, and you know, and getting in that position with a minute something left is uh, is pretty ballsy. Wow, yeah, fun. so he pulls off the submission. And I was, I mean, the Rory McDonald fight. Who I love, Rory McDonald, because I truly think he looks like a psychopath. <laughs> uh, he's a frightening guy, uh, and, and him uh, against uh, uh, fucking uh, uh, Jake was not. Uh, you know, it wasn't the most exciting fight, but it was like mm. Rogan pointed out because two guys were being a little overcautious and, and respecting each other too much. Uh, you know, neither one wanted to commit and get fucking nah, I See, I, I disagree with that. What happened that night was Ellen Berger wasn't on. He didn't do anything to try to win that fight. He threw five punches in the first two rounds. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So the third round, he, you know, he, he, he tried to push it a little bit more. He didn't do anything, and then Rory didn't do anything – to, to try to take advantage of the fact that uh, Ellenberger basically didn't show up that night. Do you think Rory was just trying to outpoint him, knowing he had the fight? Yeah, he knew he could stay on the outside and pick him apart and win and win an easy fight. And uh, that shit drives me crazy. Oh yeah. I do, you, bet. Do, you, do you think Hendricks? Has, like, yeah. You know, I know Johnny. It's like I, I like him. He's like a he's a big fucking left hand. He's a, but it seems like against St. Pierre, man, it, it, it's almost like when you get into the thing where you have one thing that everybody looks for. Which is like, you know, like Dan Henderson, as great as he is, has that, that right hand that everybody looks for, yep. or Fedor had that big right. Um, it, it seems like it's hard for those guys to become champion because everybody, like like with uh, well, Roy uh, Nelson recently, yeah. you know that giant overhand right mm-hmm. is coming, and if you could avoid that. Well, I think mm-hmm. the difference in this fight uh, is that the biggest problem that people have with George St. Pierre is his wrestling. And, you know... That this kid is a great yeah. wrestler, and you remember the Condit fight? The Condit fight was sick. That was a fucking a, an amazing fight, unbelievable. And that's the way Johnny Hendricks fights. You know, there's going to be. They asked yesterday at the press conference in L.A. They asked Johnny Hendricks, "Well, with this Roy McDonald thing that happened over the weekend, um, you know, George St. Pierre fights the same exact way. He uses that jab, um, and you know, and his length. What are you going to do about it?" And he goes, "Well, let me tell you what. The difference between." You know, what you saw last Saturday and what you'll see in my fight is I'll take a jab all day long hmm. to land that big right hand. You know what I mean? He's, so he, he's saying every time George St. Pierre throws, he's going to blast away. And, and then if they start wrestling, he's, he's, a, he's a great wrestler, too. So that is a fun fight. Were you surprised that I was very surprised that Nelson lost the way he did? Uh, I mean, he was outpointed. He can't knock him out, but it just seemed like he was tired and sluggish, and it was like fuck. I wanted to kind of see him get a title, uh, a title shot. A lot of times, guys who you know the, the guys who beat Roy Nelson all day long are guys who can box, guys who can stay on their feet and box, and and uh, you know the, the, those are the type of guys that that beat. Remember what Junior Dos Santos did to him? You know, the guys who can box and have good footwork. Right can pick Roy Nelson apart. Mm. Although I do think Cain Velasquez is, you know, with all due respect to Silva, I think Cain Velasquez is the best fighter in the UFC. I mean, because, again, he's such a big tank, and his cardio is amazing, and he's fast, and he can wrestle. He's just frightening. He is. He's the baddest dude in the world. He really is, right? Yeah. Like, after Dos Santos, I mean, how about him against, uh, I mean, Mark Hunt I had higher hopes for. Uh, Mike Hunt? (laughs) Or... or, 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 uh, Hey, would you blow me? <laughs> <laughs> Do you need to ask it? <laughs> um, or the other, uh, uh, who else did I want to see fight him? Mm-hmm. Fucking uh, mm-hmm. uh, Cormier, Daniel Cormier. Yeah, K- Kane Velasquez is one of these guys that when he gets you down on the ground, all he does is just keep imposing his will and just doing damage, man. He, he, he doesn't stop. He just keeps going. Until he smashes you and you quit. Well, I think that the, the, the fights you have coming up are absolutely amazing, and I'm probably going to go to this thing today. Just are to, you really? I think so. Yeah, it's at you the Beacon. Should. You should mention it. it's at the Beacon Theater. It's open to the public too. Beacon oh, well. Theater, and at I think one o'clock. Yes, one p.m. The big uh, press conference. Who's going to be there today? Let me see. It's going to be obviously Dana. <laughs> um, and, oh, John Jones will be there. Kane. 
uh, St. Pierre, Ronda Rousey, fucking Junior, uh, Alexander Gustafson, uh, Johnny Hendricks, and of course Misha Tate will all be there. Jesus, that's an amazing lineup. Yep, the whole crew will be there today. So that's it was exciting. awesome. We did we did LA yesterday. Place was packed. Tons awesome. of fans showed up. It was uh, it was good. People were going crazy. So if you're not doing anything or you know. I don't think you have to promote it. I think leave work today. Leave people. work today and come on down. A lot of people are going to be, we'll be there. The theater one o'clock. I'd like to be introduced to Misha Tate. Yeah, yeah. I like her. She have, yeah. a, she have a gentleman friend, maybe. Uh... <laughs> she she does. But, uh... <laughs> yeah. You can't hit on a girl in the UFC. What do I have to offer? Oh, please. <laughs> Ronda Rousey was in, and she was very conversational. And someone's like, "Hey, you're to... great." What am I going to say to her? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hi, you want to go to the beach and be embarrassed by me? <laughs> 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 well, we got to take a break. Guy. We actually yeah. got Anna Gunn coming in, too. Yeah, she's if you want to stick around, Breaking you're Bad. more than welcome, Dana. It's up to you, she's bro. From, uh, yeah, she's one of the co-stars yeah. of Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. Oh, yeah. Everybody talks about that show, man. Yeah, it's huge. Like, so, everybody's addicted to that show. It's huge. So, oh, wait. It was your birthday today? It was my birthday uh, oh. yesterday or the day before. July 28th. Whenever uh, that was, that was my birthday. I don't days, feel uh, bad knowing if you don't. Um, if, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bob Kelly has texted and he said uh, it was Dana's, uh, Dana White's birthday. Oh. You should say happy birthday. So happy birthday, man. Thank you. Uh, Appreciate it. That's great. Yes. All right. Cool, we're, man. We're going to continue maybe right. with Dana White. Maybe not. Right, we'll, we'll, see. we'll see what happens. <laughs> Thanks. This is the Anthony Show. Serious XM.